So on today's recorded round, we're gonna do something a little different. When I was out to Bald Mountain, it was a lot of big shots, and I realized that over the winter, I picked up a lot of bad habits and lost a lot of my good mechanics, essentially. I can't throw very far, very smoothly, or effectively, and I throw nose up a lot now. This is okay, it's pretty normal in the winter, especially when you get pretty busy and you have a house and all this now and you can't really get out as much. So today we're just gonna go to a small course that's open and I'm gonna play shorts. The reason we're doing this is cause smooth is far. So what I need to do is slow down. And I know many of you have heard this and you get upset about it, but I'm gonna do it because it helps out. A bunch of keeks developed into my form over the winter and I'm gonna try and work those out. And if I go to big courses just trying to bomb as far as I can and I'm muscling the entire time, I'm not going to learn anything. I need to learn how to do things timely, which my timing isn't really the issue right now. It's the muscling. So I need to slow down, throw smaller shots, and make sure that everything is uh, within mechanics. All right, so we're here. The way I like to do my practice rounds, I do believe in field work, but I also believe in enjoying your practice so you can be able to collect and process things otherwise you won't learn as much if you're not enjoying it for me i don't really enjoy field work too much so i like to come to the course when no one's really here and i won't be in people's way and i just throw multiples on certain shots and try and work on particular things i want to work on that day the main thing i told you guys that i'm working on is my reach back positioning even though i have a good reach back positioning it's still not effective enough for the pocket i need to reach out slightly more so i'm going to work on that today the errors that I picked up over the winter that I saw at Bald Mountain when I started throwing big tosses again is I'm not being smooth and I'm starting to muscle things. I'm pulling too much arm, I'm dropping my elbow, I'm causing nose up issues, and I guess balance really a whole lot. I, I don't really need to go too in depth with it, but that's the gist of it. Now the way I do my practice rounds, if I'm not throwing well distance, is I don't go out and throw distance throws. I go down to about 60% or so. So we're gonna see a lot of high 200s, maybe low 300 foot shots. What this does is this helps me stay slow and smooth and helps me stay mechanical and hopefully reinsert all that into my muscle memory. It's also much easier to work on things if you're slowing down and you can apply and do things differently. Whereas if you're really just muscling every time, it's, it's just the same motion every single time. Our first ones are just going to be small hyzers, just over 200 feet. That white tree up there, it's about 30 feet left of it. I got two piggies to start. With working on the new reachback position, it's, it kind of throws my timing off. And because I'm trying to reach out more, one of the other issues I have in my form is uh, my plant is a little too straight. I need to step out a little more. So I'm trying to work on that as well with the reach back position. Obviously a much more overstable disc. That one I felt like I dropped my elbow again, so I gotta remember to not do that. All right, I'll do a buzz in the Malta and we'll continue on the next one. When you make adjustments like this, release points will also change, which is what's happening now. And my whole balance and everything just feels off because I'm doing all that extra movement that I'm not used to. That's a great example of uh, repetition. That fourth one felt a lot better. And that's because I already tried it three times and I was starting to learn, okay, so I learned where I want to put my foot, where I want to put my, uh, my reach back, essentially. And now with that in my head, I was able to walk up and load a lot easier into that position. This one's 285 feet. It's got two baskets, so I'm gonna to go to the blue one, because that one looks more like the uh, route that I want to practice. The one on the left is 211. It's a spike hyzer. I, that's kind of a textbook shot. I don't really feel like you're learning too much form related if you're just throwing spike hyzers all day. That one over there, it looks like it's just kind of a straight flip up the flat at 285. That's more or less what I'm looking for. Being aware of my new reach back positioning, my walk up is gonna change a little bit. Direction of my walk up, I mean. I 
I like that till that tree, but that was a very, very good throw. I still feel like I'm dropping my elbow a little bit. That's something I'm gonna have to uh, get out of. And the reason that elbow problem is starting to persist is because that's the problem I used to have a few years ago. And since I've been real busy, the winter hit, and I haven't been able to keep practicing, those old issues that I spent a lot of time doing and not much time afterwards fixing are starting to come back. Okay, and I remembered something there. So one of the things I learned prior before the winter, maybe about a year or two, is uh, something very subtle. Something very subtle can change your form drastically. And one of the things is uh, just wrist positioning to help engage the tricep or certain muscles differently. So right now, lately, I've been kind of like loading myself almost like I'm dropping my elbow. So I, what I need to do is remember to, this helps me a lot. If I, even though it probably looks wrong, as long as when I get my actual pull through correct, this helps me engage the correct tricep. So you really wanna just engage the correct muscles to make sure that you're getting a higher swing. Yeah, that helped out tremendously. The accuracy is gonna be shit for a minute, but that, that, that helped me get my, uh, my swing back, my higher swing back. Let's try one more. tried adjusting but because I remembered that in the middle of that one I thought about it so I overanalyzed I overthought but I mean still I, I'm liking the results so far even though the accuracy probably looks like crap I'm just working on uh, my drives today and my mechanics what I told you so I'm just gonna pick these shots up I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna really up shot I'm just gonna pick these up go to the next hole just keep uh, working on what I'm trying to work on today one of the things I want to mention too you always got to get worse to get better. When you're working on stuff, expect to fail for a while. <laughs> 326 feet. I usually throw a putter in mid-range, but because I am trying to slow down and work on things, I'm going to throw fairways right now. One thing I want to mention too, because uh, I was saying I enjoyed the things I was seeing last uh, hole, even though the accuracy looked like crap. One of the things I want to mention, you have to get worse to get better. Growth is a graph. And it's part of the process. When you're working on new things, you're going to have to deal with a couple of weeks, maybe even a month of just pretty much garbage up until you get things worked out. <laughs> Usually I would try and do a hyzer here, but I'm trying to work on a flat toss and get my swing higher. So I'm just going to do a nice, easy, straight toss. A little bit of hyzer. I was kind of intending a hyzer finish, but... That's more hyzer than I wanted. Oh well. Um, let's try this Amanda Milwaukee tricks. It kind of is almost impossible for me to really go straight the way the tee pad is designed for the basket being the left. I almost have to do a hyzer shot, but I'm going to try straight. I have to stand right here if I want to do it. Oh man. Changing that reach back positioning is really swinging things around and causing me to uh, miss other things in my form right now. But like I said, you gotta get worse to get better. One of the things I learned, things are working well, but I'm pulling and I'm not swinging out like I should be. So let's try and get one that I swing out a little more. All right, that was much better, even though obviously it's gonna look like crap, but you could tell that was more straight in the line that I wanted to do. It was just slow, probably because I'm still also dropping the elbow. I picked up a lot of issues over the winter not playing. All right, the yellow basket up on the hill is what I'm going for. It's at 253 feet. It's about 280 because it's quite a bit uphill. Probably about 270, 280. I'm going to go with buzzes. Normally it's a putter shot, but like I said, I'm trying to keep things slow and steady and just work on mechanics today. I'm really enjoying the improvements I've been making today. I'm feeling a lot better, not just because I'm fixing my mistakes and the things that I picked up over the winter, but it's like 57 degrees out in the sunny today. It hasn't been this nice in a long time. Let's see, uh, my 2015 Redstone Bucks. Let's see. Forgot to swing out on that one. But like I said, you gotta get worse to get better. I'm going to forget some stuff that I already knew as I'm trying to fix other things. And then eventually I'll work all that together. A lot better. And you can see the difference in flight and speed. 
how much more I got out of that with swinging out. Not too hard, you know, it's, it's more of a conscious thing. It's less of a try it and more of a consciously allow it to swing out instead of around. Um, I guess we might as well try it after seeing that, right? Just throw my normal pig. Oh, you suck. Uh, I was like, it's a pig, so put more on it. I was going way too far. I was going for the blue basket. 304 uphill, might as well, right? Let's see. It's going to be a hyzer, so I'm just going to go with my normal emperor. It's a pretty overstable emperor. Oh, wow, look at that drop. So there must be a tailwind out there because that was pretty perfect. Circle's edge still. Just <laughs> this is why I don't know how it dropped. Uh, uh, what? The short location for 18 is 430 feet. The reason I'm here is just because it's, you know, it's here. It's, it's open, 430 feet. I don't have to throw a full power shot. Um, just to make sure I don't go in the water, I'm just going to use some buzzes. <laughs> I'm just trying to, again, work on my form today. Maybe I could still get there, but that's a far toss for a buzz. Oh, and that's... What I'm talking about, you can see right there. I told myself I wanted to get it there, so I got away from improper or from proper mechanics, and I started going to improper stuff again. This is why I'm doing this. Also, kind of why I'm forcing myself down to a buzz, so I can learn to stay in control even when the hole outplays me. That one I swung out, and I fixed my uh, mistakes that I made in the first one but because I still want to get it there with the buzz. I muscled it too much still, I'm, I'm forgetting things. So let's try one more. The Malta is more of a straight flyer than it is. Maybe I'll just put flex on it. That's pretty good for a Malta, I like that. All right, we're slowly coming to our conclusion for the day. This one's just picturesque, but also 263 feet, good practice hole. Uh, water play, maybe the first 150 feet, and then it's just safe after that. There's a nice headwind rolling in, though. It's like 8 miles, 10 miles per hour. Uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue, though, being that it's still a little short. I'm going to go with my R-Pro Pig. Even though it's a headwind, I should be able to control it just fine. I figured it was gonna go right, but I'm kind of going for arm swing and not stroke play today. I'm just kind of making sure the arm is swinging better today is all I'm doing. That one felt good, but looked a little high. I'm assuming that's probably just because of the headwind factor because it felt pretty good. I'm gonna try and still make adjustments though. Get my arm swing higher and make sure my finish is lower and my elbows and drop and throw those up on the finish. I like it. Maybe we can uh, throw a buzz or a multi. Yeah, let's throw a buzz, my more overstable one, and then a multi and see if we can ace it. I gotta put enough on it though. I was worried about the head one just rolling in too much over. Malta should be okay. Definitely had enough on it, but there's that headwind is coming in. Also, too, reaching back and making the adjustments is gonna adjust my angle and my release. My release. Um, the first three throws, I don't think I was doing the reach back adjustment like I should have uh, until the fourth throw. But like I said, it's probably gonna take about a couple weeks before I make all this cemented. Uh, this one's 218. I'm just gonna try and ace it, do some hydro shots before we go. After finding out about the delirium, I think I'm just ready to go get that. I'll do three more. Quick fire, ready? There's also a headwind rolling. So I got a gauge for that.
right, see you guys.